Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Arduino Workshop with Chris of MRL Trains. We're gonna, uh, he's, <laughs> boy, there went that train of thought. All right, straight out the window. All right, anyway, go to YouTube Mall Builders, <laughs> and there you can check schedules for the uh, shows, Tuesday and Wednesday shows. Those are at uh, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Also, the Thursday show and the uh, Saturday once a month show, those are at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And while you're there, be sure and click on the EMAG and uh, sign up for email notification. JD and his team do a good job. One coming out this month uh, is going to be in scale. Everything in scale. So that'll be an interesting. Uh, mag this uh, month and satisfy a few people <laughs> those uh, end scalers so with that said we'll uh, go ahead and turn this over to Chris all right Chris you're up all right get unmuted here and here we go all right welcome back everybody to the November Arduino workshop um, tonight we're gonna do something a little different I know we were talking about starting a turntable and uh, after talking to Greg, he's not going to be able to make it till next month. So I ran across while I was preparing to do some things for a turntable, I ran across something that I just figured we have to, I have to share. So as long as we've been doing this Arduino thing, I've had my biggest problem has been keeping documents and to go along with my sketches. You know, I, I, I'll spend a, a couple days working on a sketch and going out and looking on uh, Google and finding ways to wire it up or looking for other sketches or snippets that I can use. And at the end of the day, you end up losing all those. You know, I, I'll come back a month later and say, okay, I want to reset up my little servo. Uh, here's the sketch, but where's everything that goes with it? And sometimes I end up going back out and looking for it again. Uh, but I'm going to show you some really cool tools to help you keep all your documents organized right along with your sketch. So that as you build something, you don't have to lose that information. It'll always stay right with the sketch. Um, but before we do that, I want to go back and um, revisit the speedometer. I, I know a bunch of you guys have been building them because I've been getting a lot of emails and, and seeing a lot of comments. So before we run away from the speedometer and call it done, I want to just make sure that nobody out there has any uh, problems if they tried building it and got stuck or if they found a way to improve it or just have any questions about it at all, um, I'll have Johnny uh, monitor the chat room on YouTube, either that or we have a couple uh, openings in the room tonight if you wanna jump right in and ask ask the question live. Um, but either way, if you have any questions, uh, burning questions, go ahead and post them up right away. If not, I'll get started on what I was gonna show you and. Um, we'll just stop where we're at if somebody posts a question as far as the speedometer is concerned. So I'm really glad a lot of you guys had success building them, and I hope you're having fun using them. And if you found a way to improve it, please share. That's what we're here for. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start screen sharing. And first thing I'm going to do is take you back to... Uh, this website. This is my Arduino workshop website where I've showed you in the past to go ahead and uh, find out what's coming on the next show or what you might need in advance. So um, go ahead and and follow this link and it'll open up a page that looks like, like this. And there is a link on that page that you can go ahead and, and click on. It's right down here, it says link number one. I'm just gonna kind of circle it, it might be kind of small to see. So I'll go back, let me go back to here just to make sure you get a good look at it one more time. So it's sites.google.com slash view slash Arduino workshop slash home. So go ahead and go to that website and keep it up for the whole show because uh, just in case I, I may post some links on there live as we're working along because 
what I actually did was I loaded this software on my laptop and I looked at it and, and just explored it a little bit, but I didn't load it on the computer I'm on right now because I wanted to be able to work through with you guys loading it live on this computer. So let's go ahead and do that. If you click on the link on this page right here, it's going to take you to, actually it's an Arduino site, the, the official Arduino site. But I'm not exactly sure when they released this, but I thought the last time I looked a while ago, they had an online version of the web editor, but they have what they're now calling Arduino Create, and it seems to be a suite of different um, things that you can do. But the main thing is that we're gonna do is go ahead and click on this Arduino web editor, and it's gonna make us upload a little or download a little something to your computer first before it works. But what this is, is a cloud-based version of the Arduino IDE. And you're saying, well, why do I really need that? I have one on my computer. Well, the reason is there's a whole bunch of tools in it that you don't get in the IDE, including the ability to share sketches. So let's go ahead and get it loaded up and I'll show you what all those cool features are. But you might want to bookmark this. What I do is I just type in create Arduino in Google and it takes me here every time. But if you want to create a link, go ahead and make a sh shortcut in your favorites or something for this create.arduino.cc that's in the, the line right up here. So, so if, how are we going to load this? And first thing I do is just click on this Arduino web editor and it should prompt me. Well, the first thing you want to do is probably create an account, which just click on the sign me up. And all it's going to ask for is a username and a password and an email and allow you to create the account or you can log in. So while you guys create your accounts, if you don't already have one, I'm going to go ahead and log in. Oh, looking now. <laughs> Actually, I have, you got to get to watch me log in because. Oh, no, you can't see my top secret password. Oh, of course, I did the wrong one. So once you create that account and log in. No, I don't want to save passwords. I'm just going to go back to the main page, I think, because it's going to first time we want to use that here. It's just kind of a profile page. You can put a profile picture, change your name or password, typical account settings. I just clicked that Arduino icon and it took me back to the main Arduino page. But if you see this icon right here, that's another way to get to it, Arduino Create. So I'm going to click on that. It should take me back to the page where we were. Once you get to this page, you'll see again, there's these same six things. These are all the things that these six things make up Arduino Create. And, the Arduino web editor is the one we're interested in. So I'm actually, you see the one right next to it with like an LED on it says getting started. Go ahead and click on that. And this is where it's going to, I think it was going to, should have told me. That's why we worked through this live. <laughs> it just bounced me right back. All right, let's try the web editor one. Oh, wow. I wonder if this is because I have a different version of Windows. When I loaded this on my laptop, it asked me to, oh, here it comes. See all of a sudden this yellow thing popped up? It says no plug-in connection. Up uploading is disabled until you reconnect. You have to, you have to download this plug-in in order to make it work. And I don't see, well, let's click on the help. Here we go. Click on the, I'll go back to show you. If 
you click on this help thing right here, here's where you can download the plugin. And if any of you guys are working on Mac, I have to apologize because I don't have one. I don't know if the, anything's going to be different. You may have to work it out on your own. But here it does say install a plugin unless you're using Mac OS X El Capitan or earlier version. Yeah, it's working on my, I bought a Macintosh. It's working just fine. So unless you're, you know, maybe four years behind on your operating system, three or four years behind, should be fine. Okay. So then go ahead and just do the download plugin and it only takes a minute to, to upload and download. So as you can see, it popped in here already. And I'll just say show in folder. And now I get to wait. Let's try that again. Show in folder. It's probably comes and it's just put in installing executable in your folder you can go ahead and double click that just like you would install anything else and hopefully I don't lose you guys you still there all right cool so now it's should be installing. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Just one or two little yes, 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 or no, no, and I can't. <laughs> Do I accept the agreement? Yeah. Hit next. Accept the default installation directory. Hit next. I know this is painful, but I wanted to take the time to go through it with you and let you see if I have any problems. You'll know right away and vice versa. If you guys have any problems, jump right in. Post up the questions. That's what we're here for. And it wants, I have to allow my firewall to let it allow access. Click yes to accept the certificate. And it's done. But it wasn't too bad. I can close that now. Plug in correctly install. You guys get this far, hopefully. I'm taking my time to make sure you can work along. Yes, so sir. I'll, I'll just say next. Now it tells me that I need to reset Chrome to bring the certificates up to date. That could be a problem. That means I'll have to lose you guys for a minute. <laughs> so let me try skipping it and see if we can still work. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to restart. All right, so I'm going to be gone for a few seconds, and I'll be right back. I got mine set up already. It seems to be working just fine. Um, so I could. So I've now got, I got the, I haven't imported my sketchbook or anything, but now we can upload a import one of the Arduino files that we have. Yeah, let's just do the whole sketchbook. Yep. I'm back. So I got, well, I took a little longer than I thought because I got hijacked by Arduino. <laughs> as soon as I reopen Chrome, using my shortcut to this room, it uh, finished loading the Arduino thing, so it's going to hijack me a second. 
So get a little feedback. Someone got open. All right, so back to presenting and I'll go back to the page we were at. Yeah, see this okay? I just so if I go to Arduino, this is just I didn't make myself a shortcut link. Just by typing that in, it comes up at the top of the list. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so here we are back at this page again. So you'll get familiar with seeing this page. Um, so what this is is a cloud-based version of the Arduino IDE. It will keep your library of sketches up in the cloud and allow you to share them. And it gives a whole lot more features. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you what those are. This has been the answer to what I've been looking for to kind of keep all my Arduino stuff organized. So when I work on a project, Oh, it went. Am I still there? Okay. Yeah, I just had that plugin message pop up, but then it went away. I think I realized I do have the plugin installed now. So. <laughs> so when you get to this first screen, you'll see that it looks very familiar on the right hand side of the screen. This is exactly like or very close to the Arduino IDE. So this is where you can do your, your sketches. But what's really neat is it also has extra tabs. So here's a README doc. You can actually go ahead and type in, notice by default, it put like my name, my email. It's kind of like a template to give you, if you want to fill it in to do information about your sketch, like the project name I would put here. I can type in here to describe my project. Um, things that I ins installed, you can type that in here or just kind of follow the code. I mean, the examples here, and you basically build yourself a little document to document how you built your project. You know, it's not just about the sketch, it's about what resistors did I use and why, what LEDs or, you know, where did I find a snippet of code to use my uh, light sensor or something like that. Here's a good place to put all that stuff right in a document like this. And if you want, there's add tabs. There's add a secret tab. So what that does, if I add a secret tab, I can put information in here that only I will see even if I share this um, sketch with the outside world. So after tonight, moving forward with this show, all my sketches will be here. And by hitting this share button, I'll be able to put the link out there and share them with you. You can open them up right here in your copy. So there's no having to download to your computer and put it in a certain folder to be able to use it or any of that stuff. You'll be able to just come right in here. I'll share you share my sketches and you'll be able to work on your own copy right online, right along with me. But the secret tab allows you to put information that you don't want to share when you share your sketches. There's also import file into a sketch. So I haven't actually done this yet, but yeah, what it does is, okay, I've got a bunch of sketches on my hard drive. If I wanna import one, let's say this speedometer sketch here, I'm gonna see if this allows me to do it by the folder or if I don't have to drill into the folder, I bet. Yeah, so double click your folder and then click the actual IDE file then it fills in right here and you say open. So what that did now, that just opened up that file online and it'll now be in my online library. And we'll get to that in a minute. That's this stuff over on the left-hand side of the screen that we haven't looked at yet. It also lets you import every file you have in your Arduino folder. If, if any of you guys like me have built up a collection of files we've worked with on on the workshop here or through your own efforts i've got probably 40 or 50 different arduino sketches if you zip them up and click the import button the first option it gives you is to import everything you have in your arduino folder it'll let you import that zip and now every arduino project i had on my hard drive is now on the web what effort yep that's pretty awesome 
And there's, you know, you can just keep adding. You, this, this is another cool part is this one actually lets you rename your sketches where when you work on the offline IDE like we have been doing, you usually have to do a save as. It doesn't let you just rename a file for the most part. So I always end up doing a save as, and then I end up with 20 versions of the same sketch, and I forget which one was the right one or what. So here you actually get that. You can re rename or delete right here. So if you want to, you can add another tab. And I might just call this one photos. And you can actually add, like, a fritzing diagram, or if I, I'm just going to jump out to Google and you know, I'll type in fritzing. I didn't even type it, <laughs> I didn't spell it right. Flirting, yeah, right. <laughs> Oops, that's better. And I'll just uh, make a copy of this just to pretend it was my fritzing diagram, but I can copy that image. I'll go back to my uh, editor and I think, I thought you could just paste these in here. Unless I didn't copy it right. Yeah, I saw a paste, but it was grayed out, so maybe I didn't... Uh, Try that again. I did copy image. Maybe I'll try a save image as and just throw it on my desktop and see what. Uh... So now that. Uh... Huh, that's interesting. Oh, did you see that message too? I'm gonna back, I'm gonna close this out. You're about to install some drivers needed to use Arduino Genuino boards. Do you want to continue? Did anybody run into that while they were doing an install? That was hiding behind here and I wonder if that's what caused me to have problems a little earlier. I'm just gonna go ahead and say yes because I do remember now that I think about it when I did the laptop I do remember running across that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those in. Um, here's my little fritzing picture. Everything's running a little slower. I think it must be because of the diagram. Uh, not because of the uh, drivers loading here. So. All right, so skip that for now. But anyways, I can show you a better way. I was, I was going to try and do it myself for the first time, but if you go to way to the left here, you notice these are some of the same options. I mean, sketchbook examples now remember in our Reno you know, IDE when you go to examples it's got all the things like under basics you've got blink sketch fade all these same example sketches that are in the IDE are right here so going to example there's built-in and then there's from libraries there's two tabs here if you go to the built-in these are the same ones that come in the IDE so under blink if I just click on that it loaded the blink sketch and then it has a tab with blink text, kind of tells you what the sketch does. It turns on an LED, <laughs> turn an LED on and off. Well, that's pretty simple. If I go down to like the fade one, now it just loaded the, the code for fade, but then there's also a text demonstrates the use of analog right to fade an LED. But then notice here is a picture, the fritzing diagram. And then there's a schematic. Now, I use these often now when I'm looking, when I have a new part out of my parts kit that I want to find out how it works, I always 
end up going out on Google Images and finding diagrams like this. But these are the things that I always end up going back and looking for later on because I had no way to really keep them with my sketch. I didn't. I wasn't well organized on my hard drive. Well, I don't have to be anymore. All I have to do is create a new t tab and throw it right in here. Now it's always going to live with the sketch. So when I come back two, three months, a year from now, open this sketch. Oh yeah, this is how I'm going to build it. And okay, here's the schematic for the whole thing or for a certain part of it. And here's any text I put in and it explains what I did. So I don't have to try and figure out how I did it a long time ago and try and recreate the wheel. It's all here for me. This is what really got me going about this. And the even better part is, is the sharing like I was showing you. But going back to the top here, these are the same. Once I plugged in my Arduino, I would do the same thing. I would hit the verify or the upload. And then over here is save, save as, download the sketch, share the sketch. So this is, you know, just a little different version of the IDE, but all the same stuff is here. What's really neat, going back to the left-hand side here, if I hit monitor, here's your serial monitor, it'll be right here. If I was plugged in with my Arduino right now and had called on the serial monitor in the sketch, it would show up right here. So now I can just quickly go back and forth between different things and it stays right here. You know, sometimes with the serial monitor, you have to stop it and restart it after you make a change, things like that. Well, here it should always be here and work. So going back to this left-hand side, I'm going to start way at the top here. See the little squares? That takes you back to the home here, if you ever want to get back to here. Um, the sketchbook, this is going to be a list of all your sketches. As you upload sketches or create them, you can put them here and you can actually create folders. So I could put a, create a folder, say, my new sketches. That's yeah, can't, can't even type tonight. I can't type any night, so I guess it's irrelevant. <laughs> I can make another folder and call it, uh, Andy's sketches. And you can start putting different, well, I'll grab this sketch and just drop it right into the My New Sketches. Or right, let's see if it'll tell me to move. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I think it would let me move it. No, I guess not. But from these sketches, like the My New Sketches, now I could say uh, New Sketch. Oh, there. That's Move Folder 2, but we want to... Oh, yeah, here we go. Put a check in it. Move Folder 2. Oh, I must be already in it. Oh, so we'll put it to Andy's. There we go. So now where did my folders go? Example, sketchbook. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. Both of my folders disappeared. Examples, libraries. That's another thing. Uh, well, we'll come back to that later, I guess. <laughs> um, on the left-hand side, the libraries, there's a ton of libraries in here, just like there was in the IDE. But the difference is this one is always going to be a current. Every time they add a new library, it'll automatically be here because you're working out of the cloud. And I'm uh, Greg, look under Andy. Look under Andy? Okay, let me my sketchbook. Let's see, even Andy went away. All I got is the actual sketch. 
That's kind of weird. It's asking me I can import my whole sketchbook. This is what Andy was talking about before. What I did is I clicked on this button and it's saying you can import your whole sketchbook, which means there Arduino folder on your computer, it'll bring up every one of the sketches in one big zip file. I'm not going to do that at this time. If you guys want to try it out, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to try something once. I'm just going to hit the X on that. Okay, so you want to get rid of this pane just to see what, give yourself more room for your sketch. Just click that little X. And then next time you select it from here, it'll be back. I'm still uh, wondering why I lost all that stuff. That's weird. You know what else it's doing is, um, you notice before this was the first sketch I did was loaded my speedometer sketch. But here's another one with nothing in it. Here's that README. And there's my Photos tab. So these are all under this sketch with today's, with yesterday's date, actually the 30th. This was the last, this was the last time I played around with this, which I did on the laptop. I didn't do it on this computer, actually, so. Now I have to look into that a little bit. Why did those disappear and where did they go? Are they still here somewhere? Is it because there were no files in the folders? Well, we used that move to and that's when they disappeared. So I guess be cautious until we figure that one out. Anyway. Up here it says new and there's new folder and import, which was the same as that. See now it actually just put another sketch here, which was the one and the move to is grayed out, so I can't even make that move it to those folders. Interesting. Delete sketch. Yeah, it just made a brand new sketch when I hit this new sketch. And I'm going to delete this one, too, just for kicks. Because I don't really need it for anything. Actually, I'm not going to because I don't know for sure when I brought this up from my desktop if it left it behind or not. So I won't look now, but later on I will. So anyways, back to the examples. These are all tons of examples, including the ones from the IDE. If you scroll down... You know, these, you've got digital, blink without delay, a lot of the ones that we did, sensors, all the same ones in the IDE, maybe even more. I haven't compared them head to head. But then there's from libraries. Remember when you load libraries, sometimes they give you examples along with those libraries. So of all the hundreds of libraries that are in here, these are all the ones that have examples too. Like when we were working with the stepper motor, here was the motor knob, stepper one revolution, one at a time. Um, if I go to the, what's one of the ones that we loaded? Liquid crystal, that's another one that when we were playing with the LCD, you know, that one's in here. Got the hello world, uh, cursor and blink. Those are all sketches that we messed around with a while ago. Libraries. Of course, these are all the libraries that are loaded. You can mark favorites. This is what's cool, too, is um, under default, there's like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of them in here. You can just scroll, 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 keep on scrolling. So if you have ones you use all the time, Let's say you want to do this Wi-Fi. I think if I just, or where did I? I did this once the other night. There was a way to add it to your favorites. Use the library manager to browse and favorites. 
Okay, so the library manager is that star. Let's see what happens here. All the libraries included in the library are already available. Star your favorite ones to download them. See the related examples. So let's pick one that we know we'll probably use. Man, yeah, here we go. Wow, there's just tons and tons of them in here. YouTube API. Wonder what we could use that for. Andy, put your thinking cap on. <laughs> yeah, that one got me thinking right away too. So maybe it triggers off when somebody uploads a YouTube video to a channel. Wow, look at all this insane amount of libraries in here. Anyways, I'll just pick the top one just for fun and hit the star. And it should show up in my favorites. And there it is. So custom, these are libraries that you import from your computer. So if you had any, some of the shows, remember we had to go out and search for a library and I probably gave you a link to go out and download it and put it on your computer. Well, you could zip those up and use this import button and then it'll put them up here in the cloud for you too. So it'll, it should still be on your desktop version of the IDE for when you're working offline, but it'll also be available for when you work online. And of course, here's the serial monitor. We looked at that. Um, I should actually grab my Arduino and plug it in and see how that works. Give me 10 seconds and I'll do that. Figure out where I put it. I actually used my Arduino on my layout the other day. I've got two signal lights working now and I had my Arduino running them, but it's the only Arduino I have. so. I went ahead and ordered a couple nanos that are on their way here so I can leave it permanently mounted on the layout to operate signals on a turnout. All right, I'm back. Had to run to the other room to grab my Arduino. They make a bunch of noise. Everything out. And there it is. So, how many guys have more than one Arduino? I know I'm negligent. I've been doing all these shows with just one, but. I got a few, a, a few different kinds, but but most of mine, as we've worked through this stuff, most of mine are now in active duty doing something. So, yeah. So I went ahead and ordered three nanos and a shield that you can plug it into that gives you um, wire terminals on the side to represent each of the pins. So that'll allow me, especially with the signals, I'm using bicolor LEDs. So, you know, the odds of getting it right the first time and if you solder, and that'd be soldering and desoldering until I get them right. So just using the screw terminals allows not only portability and quick changes, but not having to solder. So as you can see, once I plugged in my Arduino, immediately this thing lit up. So now we have a serial port or the serial monitor working. Now we let's just find an example. So we go to built-in examples. Um, digital read serial. Let's try that. Reads pin two. I thought they had a serial monitor one where you don't have to really hook up any hardware. Does anybody remember what one that was? Look underneath communications there. All right. There's a couple different ones, serial events, serial pass-through. Try a serial call response. I'm shooting from the hip here. All right. 
Uh, I suppose you're going to need a sensor of some sort, aren't you? But I thought there were ones where you could do like keyboard typing or something just to type and see it. Yeah, it would be underneath communications, to be honest with you. Bare minimum, boink, digital read serial. Fade. Yeah, these all need some kind of a sensor hooked up to your Arduino. Maybe it's from the library? No, not really. Try to try strings if the, if if two. Yeah, that could be it. White setup serial begin. We All right, I want to upload this once. I don't see any hardware connected. So if you look real quick, it starts right at void setup, so it's not defining any pins. It starts by s s launching the serial monitor, and then it goes right into a while statement, and then serial print. And then void loop is pretty much the same thing, so. Yeah, it's just showing you how to use the uh, the to find certain characters within a string. Okay, I'm just looking for something where you could just yeah. type and watch it show up on the screen. Well, that'll output it, though. That's going to output to the screen. So if you upload that and run it, it's going to put stuff on the screen. All right, so here we go. First time I'm loading anything from this. Like I said, I wanted to kind of work through this live tonight. Other than taking a look at what some of the stuff did, I haven't actually even hooked up an Arduino or I didn't even have it loaded on this PC before the show tonight, so we could just kind of work through this together. Busy, busy, busy. So, Johnny, while we're waiting for this, does anybody have any questions on the speedometer or? Okay. Okay, so we got some comments on uh, Greg said he had a couple Unos, a couple Megas, and a couple other Arduinos when I asked before. Um, I have a whole collection. <laughs> I need to. I've just been negligent at finding time to even order the things, so I finally just sat down and I had to order something else for home here, and while I was at it, I just went out and well, this is not going well. I'm wondering if I'm not on the right COM port. It should, it says busy. You did restart your browser right after it installed that plugin? I did. I thought you did. You know what I'm missing? You know what I'm noticing here? There is a difference from the IDE is you don't have down below at the bottom where it kind of shows you the progress of, of uh, compiling and uploading. I don't see anything like that here. Hey, Chris, while you're playing with that, uh, you talked about the Pro Mini you got. I, I got, got the panels instead of the Pro Mini, so I had the USB already. So I have this uh, this board, which is a Mega, what they call Mega 2560 Pro. And what this is, is the same thing as like a, 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 a Arduino, Arduino Mini, a Pro Mini, but it's a it's it's equivalent to a Mega. Oh wow! Well, it's a Mega Mini. How's that? So you get these from uh, Banggood, and they already have a USB on them. Oh, they, have, wow. they have the FDDI chip on them, so you just plug them in and go. The only oh. thing that it requires is soldering. So whatever you're gonna put on it you just solder well that's awesome at 54 hours and about eight times the memory storage capacity and processing power so like for those of us in the dcc plus plus world uh there's some limitations of writing it on a nudo you can't do network communication on it there's not enough room to store the code on a nudo mm -hmm. for the advanced feature set but with the mega you can but that lets us keep our, our plus pluses as compact little boxes 
And you get three, uh, and you have three com ports like the normal Mega. And you get these from Robot Den, uh, D Robot D Y N. Um, you, they're on AliExpress, and they're like five bucks, I believe. All right, so I'm going to try changing my com port, although I only have the one option. Oh, you know what I never did was select a board. Remember, remember when you opened your, our first show when we opened our Arduino IDE, you had to select what kind of board you have. So I have to find the Uno. Arduino Uno Wi-Fi? No, I it, just want. It's up toward the top, but it calls it Arduino Genuino Uno. There it is. Yep. I wonder if that might be why I had a problem there. So the other thing I did, uh, in case you weren't paying attention and wondering how I got to that screen. Right here, you see the full screen icon way to the upper right of your um, text area in your editor. I clicked on that and it kind of made me full screen. If you notice, all your little things are still here. You got sketchbook, examples, library, monitor, help, preferences on the left side as a toolbar. So now that I actually have a board, then you know Uno at COM5. Let's try uploading again. Well, see now over here in the upper right, I see very uploading string index of down in the very bottom. No plugin popped up for a second there and disappeared. Wow, oh, got all kinds of weird messages, but now it just says done uploading. So success. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I want to, right over here on the right, you see the four arrows again, but they're pointing to the center. I'm going to exit full screen because now I want to see that serial monitor. Huh, there it is. It just mirrored what was on my screen onto the into the serial monitor. I wonder if I type. Nope, typing isn't doing anything. So let's see what happens if I go into the editor and type. I'll start at the top here and just add something in here. Oh. Happens if I hit send, nothing. Okay, so I'm not. Well, let's see here. Look for the first last instance of a character in a string. Well, that's weird. <laughs> okay, so we don't know what this sketch does. I don't know. I'm not going to take the time. If somebody else does, jump in and let me know. But. Uh, string index of and last index of functions so it didn't do what i thought it was going to do but at least we successfully uploaded something to our uno off of here so so basically what it's doing is it's going into that html text or whatever in the string variable and it's cycling through trying to find what the first and the last character is and it's printing it to the serial monitor yeah okay so it's saying uh I'm just curious if I click this. Oh, serial monitor copied to clipboard or monitor output. Huh, that's cool. I never saw that in the serial monitor on the IDE, but maybe it is there. But see this little button right here? I just clicked on that and it just told me it copied all this stuff in the serial monitor to my clipboard. Okay, so I wanted to paste it into a different program or even out here I could do a go back to the to this side of it. Oh, it's not going to let me add a tab because this is a built-in example. They don't let you edit the built-in examples unless you do a save as. But if this was my own thing now, I could just add a tab and paste that stuff right in the tab. I'd be willing to bet. So I think that's about all unless somebody has something. Oh, here's preferences. Let's see what that does. I think I can change the... Space currently used, 0%, one sketch of 100 used. I wonder if that means you can only keep 100 sketches. Oh, 100 megabytes. Zero meg out of 100. Well, you can load a lot of sketches in 100 megabytes. 
I wonder if there's a paid for version if you need more. I haven't seen anything about it. You can change your font size, it looks like. Change the editor theme. If you don't like the light, go to the dark. Save when verifying and uploading. Enable auto save, always show output panel. These are some of your options. Oh, here we go, console, show verbose output. Remember I talked about that on one other show. I like having that on because when I'm, let's go back to here and do the upload. Uh, let's see, where, where is the console? It's not showing it, is it? I wonder if it's under here once. No, it just says done uploading. Let's see if there's another preference to allow us to show the console. Share a sketch, download sketch. You know what? Let's try that once. I'm gonna let's experiment with the share. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, upload into my sketchbook something from my computer. And I'm going to try and share it to you guys. So, so I'm going to go to Arduino Workshop. Pick that and say open. All right, now I'm going to hit share. Link to share this sketch. Embed this sketch to your blog or website by copying the following code. All right, so I'm going to say copy link. I'm going to have to reopen my web page because I lost it when we... had to close my Chrome before. So just take a second. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in right here. It looks like I have to turn it into a hyperlink. I'll publish it. So now if you guys go ahead and refresh your website page, you should see that link on there. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to have, um, Johnny, you want to share Andy's screen? And I want to have Andy click on that link and let's see what happens. You know, it's going to be different for me because I'm all logged in with my own account. But I want to see what happens when somebody like Andy would log into it now. Sure. Let's go try that. I just go to the Arduino website. What is that? What is that URL again? I've got it, but not handy. It's uh, oh, dot Google. sites dot google dot com slash view slash Arduino workshop. I got it. Home. I knew I had it before. All right. But all right, let's share a screen out so you can see. All right, so. So that adds, then I could just add it to my sketchbook. Right. So I add that. And now I have this one, which I, I've got all of these separated over here. So I could just move that over to that. No, you got a bunch of them before. Yeah, this is actually a copy of one of those. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I've got, so I've got you probably have it already if you uploaded all the ones from before. Now I wonder if that if that's a copy of that or if I edit it, could you see? Oh, I probably copied it to my library. It just copied, yeah. Right, because that's in my own. Yeah, okay. It doesn't it doesn't allow you to edit my version, it's just actually Yeah, we could share it back and forth easy enough, but yeah. yeah. 
So once you load, once you load it like this, now you can go to your dot 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 drop down and do a save as, or just like you did, save it to your library. So. Yeah, because that coming in from here, let me just gives me a choice of, of save eager. Right, it's just opening the cloud-based web editor and loading it in there. If you want to save it, you won't have it in your sketchbook. And if you use the offline, you know, the desktop variant of Arduino, you could download that sketch to your Arduino folder to work with it. Because it has a, you know, add to my sketchbook if you're using the cloud version or you have a download option as well. Sure. If you want to put it on your hard drive, you're not going to be online all the time. Does that mean that sounds like a chipmunk or just a feedback? <laughs> Probably bad. Yep, that's pretty sweet. Okay. Hey, I'll go to use the cloud version just because I use multiple machines to jump around between them. I've been keeping my Arduino sketches in my iCloud account, but I don't always have my Arduino environment set up. This is a lot, a lot simpler. Yeah, well, that's to share. That's what's really neat because what I was doing, you know, on my hard drive, I have a copy and I actually have them in Dropbox just so that I can access them from different computers. But then I also have to upload them like to my Google Drive, a copy of them so that I can share them with you guys on the show. So I've got multiple copies in multiple places, which I always hate having redundant copies because you never know if one is newer than the other. You know, you should never have parallel copies of a file. So this is really nice because I can just upload it, work out of the cloud, access it from any computer, and share it with you guys without having to keep two or three versions of the same file. In fact, they've got backup. You look, here's the speedometers in the backup. I've got some of them in my Dropbox and then some of them in the Arduino workshop, which is a shared folder but it didn't work real well. So I ended up copying them out to Google Drive to share them. You know, so it's like, it's been a real pain. And then like I was talking about earlier, trying to save fritzing diagrams or other little things. Actually, I'll show you my uh, OneNote is what I use a lot of times as a Microsoft product, but uh, okay. Um, All right, I gotta stop. The... I made this full screen for you. I'm gonna get my workbooks back. Here we go. So, like Arduino workshops or basic setups. This is what I've started doing: is keeping these basic setups. And here's a LED single with a push button. Here's a setup for a push button. Now I can put these right in this, any sketch that has a push button. I can put this in. I don't have to go open up my OneNote to find these. There'll be a copy of it right in the sketch when I create the project. As long as I put them there. Here's a basic servo connection. It's not there. Here's your basic IR and photo diode. So you know, this is just a little library of snippets. Oh, I apologize. I feel bad about that. Here was not sharing the whole time, huh? Thanks for jumping in. <laughs> All right. Let's take that question first, then I'll go back and show you what it was I wasn't showing you. <laughs> Get my microphone back on. That's All right, uh, hopefully I'm not messing this up. El Bombo 22, how can I add boards to uh, create like the ESP8266? Andy, can you jump in on that? Oh. Oh, I got my mic on. Um, all right. So, what was that question one more time? You're still screen sharing, Chris. <clears throat> you want to know, uh, how can I add boards to create like the ESP8266? 
Oh, uh, tell me. I have to look at the board. I, I, I could, I could handle this. Hold on. Chris, you're muted. Holly. <clears throat> Just give me two seconds. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that board or what it does, so I won't well, be of any help. Yeah, he's, he's wanting to know uh, how he can add it to uh, create. I guess you Oh, the create. Yeah. And like a picture of it? Yeah, and that program oh, you're showing. How do you add the board to it? Yeah, the actual board interface is slightly different. It just has the native Arduino oh, stuff. I right. Okay, I get what you mean. Let me go back to screen sharing. Let's take a look. I'm looking so for up it. here is where, right up here is where all of select other board and port. Yeah, but it's not listed as available there, but I found a document on how to do it. Um, in the project hub, there is, I've just figured out the details of it right now, but in the project hub, which I haven't looked at a lot either, uh, there are some other features that I've been kind of playing with as we've been talking of, uh, of the Arduino Cloud. So there's the Cloud IDE and there's the project hub. There's Arduino Cloud also, which I already downloaded the sketch for that. Uh, just as a side note, that's a, a an Arduino sketch you can put on your Arduino to allow it to communicate the Arduino code. It's a sketch that lets it talk to Arduino Cloud and do some creative things like get a status from the internet to your Arduino, things like that. Um, but I'm looking in the project hub, there's a, a, some information on that ESP. I've just got to read about it to figure out what they mean. Yeah, so what, what he's talking about while he looks for that, this project hub is actually, if you created something and you want to share it with the world, you can go ahead and add it into this project hub. Yeah, he wants to know and, how to add it there. Yeah, if he wants to add it into the project hub, or does he want to add it to a sketch like this, you know, into his own version of uh, his sketchbook? Well, he wants to be able to write to it to program for it. So is that actually an Arduino board or something else? It's an Arduino compatible board, but it's one of the boards. It's not an official Arduino board. He said but he, he uses Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi? Yeah, he uses Wi-Fi. It's that one we were talking about uh, prior to the show, Chris. That, that's that, what I thought. That's why I kind of deferred to you because that's something like what you were talking about. Yeah, which I haven't played with this cloud platform. I've always used the Arduino desktop program. Uh, yeah, I was so impressed when I saw this because all the different things. Well, are like one thing it might have, it might be harder because this might be built specifically for for Atmel processors, where the ESP eight two six is a little bit different animal. Everything how the ESP eight two six six could be used in Arduino IDE is there's a there's a group of people who created a basically all the coding all the software aspect of it so that the board could communicate with the ide because well, all the ide all the ide is is you're writing you're writing that code and it's just converting it to machine code and putting it on the board and for the purpose of our our conversation about this um esp8266 boards can be used in various ways with arduino so it depends on how you want to use it if you want to use it as a serial interface module that is available inside of create you could use it as a serial interface board at, by using the library to speak to 8266. However, from all I've found with a quick search, the 8266 is not natively supported via the Arduino compatible firmware because strictly speaking, the, the 8266 boards are not strictly Arduino compatible hardware. They actually run a different program called Lua or a different uh, coding language called Lua. Um, been around a long time, but uh, so what somebody has wrote is an environment in Lua that will execute that Arduino code. That stack of stuff, from everything I can see, doesn't seem to be supported yet in Create. So you could use it as an add-on, as a wireless serial interface to your to your Arduino Uno or Mega or Leonardo or whatever. All that seems to be well supported as an extension to an existing Arduino. But using the native uh, Arduino stack on top of the Lua code of the H two six does not. I can't find anything saying it's supported yet. 
nor may it ever be supported, really, because it's pretty. You know, it's a it's a different animal. Me and me and Chris Rode highly too. We've been talking about using those boards for a lot of stuff, but it's pretty bleeding edge. They're yeah. great little boards, though. If you if you if you get yourself more acquainted with Arduino, Arduino, can't talk tonight. Uh, definitely check them out. They're cheap. Um, the hardest part, and and I know it's, it's not really that hard. It's just that getting used to how to connect it to Wi-Fi, all that jazz. And then once you're off and going to the races, yeah, the sky is the limit. And and when he means cheap, I mean they're like three bucks or two bucks. You can stick these things in everything. And a bunch of us are talking about using them for all of our turnout controls, to where layouts can have. Nothing but a power wire struck through it. All the signaling would be over Wi-Fi. Yeah, he said uh, makes sense. Thanks. Well, that's good. Glad we could help. Those guys are good help. That's why I got them on the show. You know, I said I'm not an expert. I'm just a beginner working through it with you guys. So that's why I have experts to prop me up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. No problem. All right, so I'm going to just jump back real quick to what I was not showing you before that I was talking about. So I use OneNote and I've got this little, I save these little snippets like if I, here's a typical setup for an IR LED and a photo diode or a, a push button. You know, these are the common push buttons we get with our kits. Here's the pinout for those push buttons. And it's even got a link back. This is what I love about uh, using OneNote if you copy just copy from a website and paste in here. It even puts the link to the website you grabbed it from if you ever want to go back. So I just keep all kinds of little snippets of information like this as I'm working through a project. Here's even if I want to figure out a resistor color code chart for that. Um, here's the sketch we use for, for our speedometer. This is a little photo sensor for the speedometer. So I keep all these little snippets and basic setups. So no matter what project I'm trying to create, I can just go back, all right, I need a push button. All right, there's how I wire it. I want to add a photo sensor. Okay, that's how I wire it. And then, uh, there's, okay, that's just the library. Um, Here's the pinouts for my 16 by two. I just typed them in here, but then there's also this link to the web page, which we used. Uh, this real, this is still one of my favorite Arduino websites for finding information about those obscure parts you get in your Chinese kits that have no instructions. <laughs> so a lot of cool stuff, but that's another tool that I use, but now I'll be able to just copy any of those pictures now right out of there when I'm creating a sketch and add them to a new tab here and they'll always stay with the sketch so I don't have to keep opening OneNote to look back for them you know or when I don't save them I have to go scour the internet and try and try and figure out where I found them in the first place when I'm not smart <coughs> enough. All right any other questions out there? Or? No that's it. Otherwise, um, for the next show, um, hopefully Greg will be able to, Greg Hines will be on with his turntable. And I want to work through some basic things be before he does with you guys, like doing it with a servo and doing it with a stepper motor, because those are, those an you could use those to animate more than just a turntable. They're kind of like the speedometer. I want to do a building block from the ground up just learn the basic concepts and then you can apply them to all different things rather than just building a complicated um, finished product. I like to use the building block approach to find out why we do things and, and how kind of use your thinking cap on how they could be used for other projects. So we'll just kind of start with a, using a servo for a turntable and then find out why that's not as good as a stepper motor. And we'll try a stepper motor and then we'll have Greg show how he really took that thing. And, you know, there's pros and cons each way. And we'll kind of explore those. So, And I'm also looking for any ideas. 
you guys have something you really want to build but you're not quite sure how to go at it, just let me know, either through the chat right now or, or email me or, or Johnny or post it up on Google+, Facebook, any of the other social media versions of uh, YouTube model builders that you use. Uh, get Put it out there because I'm looking for ideas here. I'm kind of running out of stuff to, to do, and I want to do stuff that you guys would use. So give me your ideas. With that, I think if nobody else has anything, we'll uh, let Johnny close her up. All right. Let me uh, check one more time, make sure we... Yeah, right, we, we got nothing over. All right. All right. Let's see here. All right, go to YouTubeMallBuilders.com. There you can find the uh, schedules for the Tuesday, Wednesday shows. They start at 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Thursday and the uh, Saturday live shows start at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Be sure and uh, check on the uh, EMAC. Click on that one. Sign up for email notifications so you'll be notified when the EMAC comes out because this month's issue is going to be about in scale. The whole issue is in scale. And uh, JD and his team do a great job on that one. Uh, let's see. Our next uh, scheduled show will be uh, tomorrow night. That'll be uh, Johnny Small Train Talk Show. Uh, I will not be here tomorrow night. I will be in Pennsylvania, Altoona, Pennsylvania, for the uh, Fine Scale Expo, along with Andy and Chris here. And a few others will probably be there too. Uh, oh yeah, Mike uh, with uh, Barry's workbench, he's going to be up there also. So we got a surprise for you on who's going to be doing the Thursday show. I tried to contact uh, Laurel and Hardy, but couldn't get a hold of them, so I had to go with somebody else. <laughs> but uh, after that. Uh, we don't have anything until November the 14th, and that's going to be the Fine Scale Show with uh, Andy and uh, Miles Hale and Ralph Ranzetti. And then the next night, because of the way the month of November the schedules work out, <coughs> uh, Into the Locomotive Shop with Joe Desmond. That'll be on uh, November the 15th. All righty, with that said, uh, Y'all uh, have a good time on Thursday night show, and I will see you back on the uh, November the 9th. I will be back and be back on that show again. Be back for the Thursday shows. All right, y'all have a good night. Good weekend. And we'll see you later. <laughs>